Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Jessica from the Waldock Way, and today's video is going to be a couch chat about strewing. So strewing may seem like this foreign word that you've never heard of before, but you probably have, you just haven't heard it called strewing. So some people use it as shelf work where they put things on a shelf for their child to do throughout the week. Some people refer to it as an invitation where they leave things out maybe at breakfast time or at nap time for their child to be invited into to want to play. And for me, I just call it strewing because that's what you're doing. You're strewing things in the wake of your child so that they will hopefully stumble upon it and just be encouraged to discover and explore something that you've left out for them. Now, I first heard about strewing um, and it was referred to for unschoolers. So unschoolers do a lot of strewing to try to figure out where their children's interests lie and to try to get things in front of their children. So because we didn't unschool at the time, we still really don't, we're more eclectic homeschoolers, but because we didn't unschool, I didn't think strewing was for us until I heard a podcast with Colleen Kessler, which I will link her podcast and her blog in the description box down below because it's amazing and you should listen to it. And in a podcast, she talked about how she was a night owl and how she strewed for her children in the morning so that she could get some more rest. And I heard angels singing because I am a night owl and the morning time was our biggest struggle in our household. So while Emily doesn't sleep late and she doesn't get up super early, but she gets up at a thousand miles an hour and I get up and need like an hour for you to not speak to me or look at me or like I need to wake up slow. So while we would probably wake up about the same time, we started our mornings very differently. And at the end of my hour of time, I was like, ah, because she had talked to me nonstop and she wouldn't leave me alone. And there was nothing that I could do to just be like, I just need a second. Please just give me a second. And finally I tried strewing and I can get almost my full hour of wake up in peace now. So since I'm a night owl, it just makes the most sense for me just strew something the night before. So that's what I do. I strew something the night before. I leave it either on our coffee table, our homeschool table, our dining room table, and sometimes in the homeschool room floor, depending on what it is. So I just leave something out that I think will interest her. Sometimes it ties into something that we're learning. So for instance, when we were learning about animals, a lot of the things that I left out were animal based. Um, sometimes it's a math concept I think she might need to review, so I leave out a fun way to do that. Uh, sometimes it is just some STEM, some building, engineering. Uh, it just depends. It depends on what's interesting her at the time. It depends on what we're studying at the time. It depends on what I have on hand, and it also kind of depends on what mood I'm in. So I will leave something out of some kind the night before. For her, it has become almost as exciting as like Easter or Christmas morning. So she gets up knowing that something has been left out somewhere in the house and she has to find it. And she's excited to see what it's going to be each day. So it may be something that she's had, but as we all know, kids tend to forget what they have and things get overlooked. So some things are left in my homeschool closet that she doesn't have access to. And other things I just bring out and bring new life to them with either a printable or the way I've set it up or just making it inviting. Sometimes I will leave her a note of a way that I think she might like to do it. But again, with strewing, there's one key concept, zero expectations. I'm gonna say that one more time because I know for us mamas that is a hard one. You cannot have any expectations. You cannot expect that your child is going to do it a certain way. You can't expect that they're gonna do it your way. You cannot leave learning objectives tied to strewing and you cannot expect that they're gonna do it at all. They may look at it and go, I'm not feeling that today, and that's totally fine. Put it away, bring it out in a couple more days or a couple more weeks. I promise you, they will love it when the time is right. Sometimes I strew something that she requests be left out for a few days, and that's why the items that I strew may change locations. If she's asked that it be left and it was on the homeschool table, then the next day, it may leave something on the coffee table 
or the dining room table. It just depends on where I think we're gonna be and what she's left. She maybe have been doing a project in the school room and the school room table has stuff all over it. So I'll strew something in another area. That also leaves me open for what I'm gonna strew and where I'm gonna strew it. If I strew something in the kitchen, I may put baking stuff out with a whisk and her little apron. If I'm strewing something in the living room, it might just be an educational DVD. I will make sure that I add some examples of some of the things that I've strewed at the end of this video to give you an idea but by no means does it need to be fancy. It can be as simple as some rocks and a magnifying glass, an educational DVD, some books. It can be um, stuff that you wanna bake with, just leave it on the kitchen counter. It can be some paper and markers and crayons and stamps and stickers and throw it on a table in an inviting way and let them create to their heart's extent with no rules, none. You let them do it however they wanna do it. And I promise you at the end of that time period, you are going to be like, huh, I wouldn't have done it that way. Or you're gonna be blown away by what you've learned about your child. I know I have been. There's been things that she's done that she probably would not have done if we hadn't been using shrewing because I've always am there to tell her how to do it or what to do with it. And there wasn't as much room for free play or free exploration or just discovery in general. So I think strewing has been such a joy to bring to our homeschool. It has definitely helped our morning time. So the way it works for us is I leave something out the night before. She discovers it when she wakes up in the morning. She has about 30 to 45 minutes of free whatever she wants to do with it. So I um, will get up make breakfast, sometimes start dinner in the crock pot. And then by the time I say, okay, breakfast is almost ready. She's getting, getting ready to kind of clean it up or put it all back together. Or sometimes she'll bring whatever it is to breakfast with her to finish because we go straight into morning basket with our breakfast, which that's a whole nother video to come soon. But that's kind of how that works for us. Depending on what it is, she may bring it up to breakfast with her so that she can finish it as we're doing morning basket. Sometimes it's something that may stay out for a couple of days and that's fine with me as long as it's, you know, tidy enough that we can walk through the house and, you know, things that the cats aren't going to eat or whatever. I have no problem with that. As long as she's still actively engaging in it, that's okay with me. It might not be okay with you, so you may have to make a few more rules, but for us it's fine because I think that um, play matters. It's very important in childhood. So that's how strewing works for us. So some of the common questions that I get are, where do you store it all? Where do you store what you strew? Where do you buy what you strew? Most of what we strew are things that we already have, things that are already stored in our house. So for instance, I may use um, her wooden blocks and some of our stem bin cards from Teach Outside the Box, which I will link those down below as well. I may also just grab some paper and some markers. I may fold the paper in half and I may illustrate a card and leave it out to give her an idea, but that doesn't mean she has to make cards. So you can do that. You can kind of um, maybe leave a, ca a picture of a castle out and kind of build a mini castle and leave some blocks out. But if they choose not to build a castle, then that's fine. You have to be okay with that. Um, you can, if you went on a nature walk, maybe you found some nature finds yesterday. So today, leave all of your nature finds out with a magnifying glass or maybe go outside and get some leaves and leave a magnifying glass and paper and crayons. Kind of maybe do a leaf rubbing yourself as an example to leave with it. Any activity that can be done independently can be strewed and it can be strewed in just an inviting way. So it doesn't have to be that you go buy specific things for it. It doesn't have to be tied to learning goals and objectives. It's just fun. Follow your child's interests. If you're watching a TV show about pandas and they start asking a million questions about pandas, next time you go to the library, pick up a few extra books about it. Put them out on the table and just see what happens. Sit back and listen and learn all about your child through the things that you've strewed and the way they interact with them. If you have any more questions about strewing, I would love for you to leave them down below in the comments as I'll be checking them and answering them as much as possible. And again, I highly suggest going over to Colleen Kessler's blog because she has an email series and I believe it's five days of emails that come to you that kind of tell you the ins and outs of strewing. It's how I started 
and it was a blessing. I will also leave a blog post down below that I did about strewing to give you a few more ideas. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more like it.